This is a Castle Country Radio FYI. We are here to talk about 2015 Carbon County Star Solar and Eclipse parties, and we welcome host Eddie Horvath to the studios. Eddie, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. This is uh, fascinating, really, and um, I, I hope it's contagious. I've uh, always had quite an interest in the, the cosmos, and obviously you're passionate about it. What was it that got you started? Uh, just as a kid looking up and seeing how many stars there were. Um, you know, there's so much stuff to see out there in space. A lot of it you can see with your eyes, but most of it you need to have a pair of binoculars or a telescope. And even just a small telescope, you can see so many things that the naked eye can't see. Sure, you know, even with a spotting scope, look, look at the craters on the moon. You'd be amazed. Oh, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And we're fortunate to have uh, that type of night sky going on uh, locally. I mean, up on the Wasatch Front, I don't know, maybe you can see two, three stars. <laughs> yeah, that, thanks to that city light pollution. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, again, we, we really got a, a fortunate situation here uh, locally. And uh, I know many areas of Utah, Bryce Canyon in particular is famous for the uh, the night skies, but uh, I don't know if they have anything on us really. Uh, I mean, yeah, a whole, you know, five minute drive, we can get into the areas that are dark so we can see the night sky without sure. the city light. So, you know, you don't have to make long trips to see this stuff. But now you're taking this uh, to another level, really, with the, the uh, telescopes that you have available and the, the, uh, the regularly scheduled solar star and eclipse parties. I guess we won't have an eclipse for a while, but uh, the next event is coming up very soon. Yeah, on uh, July 11th is going to be our next solar party, and those are held at the Peace Garden in, here in Price. Um, they go from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon, and they're specifically just to look at the sun. We have very expensive, safe filters that are on the telescopes that allow us to view the sun. So please remember, especially and let your children know, don't look at the sun through binoculars or a telescope without filters because it can immediately blind you. Yeah, you know, and uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people, uh, there's a red flag immediately when they think, look at the sun through a telescope. Wow, I just, uh, we, I mean, because, you know, in the past, when th there have been eclipses, people have been cautioned not to look at it at all, not even with sunglasses. Exactly. Uh, maybe a welder's helmet. I don't know. Yep. But, uh, you can use a welder's helmet, but it takes a special lens in there. Uh, the general ones that come in a normal welder's helmet are not safe to look at the sun, even though people do it. Uh, they usually find for a few hours afterwards that they have very bright spots in their vision. <laughs> mm, yeah, it could be dangerous. Very dangerous. But you have the professional equipment, the filters. We do. To, yep. To, uh, On all of our telescopes that we use, we have the safe filters for them. So this solar party, you mentioned it goes through the uh, the midday, essentially, and uh, people can just drop by and take a look. Is that? Yep, exactly. It yep, it's free to the public. Anybody can come and take a look at it. And then when they're done, they can go in the museum and check out our awesome museum that we have here. It really is. It really is, yeah. I mean, it, it's great. I've seen some other ones, and we really have some awesome stuff at our museum. I uh, have had the same experience at uh, uh, larger communities, and you go into the museum and say, where's this stuff? Is exactly, this yep. <laughs> <laughs> because this USU Eastern Prehistoric Museum is just loaded up, and it's just uber impressive. It is, and it's always changing. We're always getting some new stuff there, so it's great to see. Okay, so the next solar party coming up July 11th, and uh, uh, there are also a star and, um, well, I guess it won't be an eclipse party until what? Uh, uh, the next eclipse will be a solar eclipse, and it will be a full eclipse, and it will be on September 21st of 2017. So, yep, yeah, that's a ways off. Yep. Okay. Ours here in Utah will be about 98%, which is still considered a full eclipse, uh, but if someone wants to actually see the sun get actually blocked out, they're going to have to drive over the border to Idaho. <laughs> hmm. My latest National Geographic magazine is all about Pluto. Now, yes. <laughs> I was disappointed when Pluto was downgraded to a dwarf. And, and there is a, a, a new space probe headed that way, the New Horizons spacecraft. I, I liked uh, how uh, the, the writer turned uh, Pluto being absurdly far away. 
um, and took many, many years even to get there, traveling a million miles a day. It did, yep. It took just over nine years to get there. So, and we're not even there yet. We still have a few thousand miles to go. Right. So, uh, I think the 14th or 15th, yeah. uh, the, uh, they'll be within a certain range of it. And yeah, to where we can start getting those nice high-definition pictures. Right. And I guess uh, a lot, there's a lot of interest in the, uh, the the biggest moon. And I think there are four or five moons. Uh, but the biggest moon uh, has actually created a binary system yes. uh, w yeah. with the uh, the planet. Yep. If you can still call it a planet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I consider it a planet because that's how I grew up and was taught. So I still call it a planet. <laughs> I consider it a planet, too, because I, I, I just barely learned the uh, mnemonic device that Matilda visits every Monday, just stays until noon period. To remember the order of the planets. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then they changed it and added yep. a planet X or whatever the case was. I don't know. There were, it seems like there were two added and Pluto was downgraded just a few years back. Yep. But uh, yeah, if, interesting stuff. I, apparently it uh, rotates the opposite direction of the Earth. It does, yep. And uh, that's kind of crazy. And uh, actually wasn't even discovered. It was suspected for a lot of years, but wasn't even discovered until the, what, the 30s? The yeah, 1930s? about that, just because it's so far away. And even in our telescopes, it's very difficult for us to see them. Um, we just had a donation of a brand new telescope that are only donated to observatories and universities. And with this telescope, when Pluto comes around to our view, we should actually be able to see it. Okay. It won't be nothing spectacular. It's just mm -hmm. going to be a, a big bright dot, but we'll actually be able to see it. Well, that sounds uh, interesting. I, I, I hope uh, more people are aware of, of the, this uh, opportunity that, that you are providing. I hope so, too. We're slowly growing. <laughs> well, now let's talk more about uh, telescopes. Of course, the, the mother of all telescopes, the Hubble, is uh, uh, yeah. just providing incredible, fantastic views. And uh, as I understand it, the, the light that we're looking at now started many millions of years ago it was just getting here so we're it looking did. into the past millions yeah. of years into the past we really are and you know hubble's just done so much for the scientific community and unfortunately it just got its last upgrade recently um it's starting to slowly come back towards earth and once it does it's going to burn up in the atmosphere so what we have now is just instrumental in the studies of science so Sadly, it's not going to be around too much longer. It should be a fantastic sight when it re-enters the <laughs> atmosphere, though, because it's going to be a flaming red ball up in the sky. <laughs> it's uh, kind of sad to think of after uh, the, the photos of the nebulas and all of yeah. the galaxies and uh, just yeah. billions and billions. And it's amazing what I was able to see. You know, for years, you know, we didn't know that there was the pillars of creation or the hand of God that, you know, they've named out there. and. You know, Hubble sent back these phenomenal high-def pictures of these nebulas, and it's like, you know, they're just mind-blowing to see. Yeah, and that's after the initial photos were no good at all. Exactly. It was yep. an abject failure to start with. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and the telescope was only off by, I think it was three millimeters. And that's all? And that three millimeters made the Hubble absolutely useless until right. they went up and corrected the lens space shuttle mission yep and, yep. and they fixed it they had one shot at it yeah and pulled and it they out. done it yep. yeah yeah uh, that's very cool okay well let's talk about your telescopes uh, several notches i'm sure above the amateur level you're you're talking about some <laughs> some good equipment here yeah um most of our telescopes are uh they're all professional telescopes but they are what the general public can buy um they their smaller ones are uh, 90 millimeters, which is three and a half inches, and they'll range anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars for those ones. And then we have some eight-inch ones as well. Uh, we have a 10-inch Dobsonian that we use, and then we just got that new donated one, which is the Celestron GPS CPC 1100. Um, it's actually guided by the satellites in space as well. Oh. So it was a fantastic donation. Wow. Yeah, that's so We impressive. can't wait to use it. <laughs> Guided by the satellites. It is. What a concept. I had no idea. Yep. Amazing. Okay, let's talk star parties. Um, I, I'm assuming you get away from the uh, lights of the city, as it were, here uh, locally. Correct. Uh, and it's still local. We have the star parties up on top of Wood Hill, which is just in North Price. So basically from about Main Street up to the viewing area is only about three miles total. Mm -hmm. So we're still here locally. The yeah. Wood Hill Observatory. 
Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Okay. <laughs> it <All> is right. <laughs> now. <laughs> How do people get involved if, if they're interested in this? Uh, they can look us up on Facebook. That's where our club page is. And you can just look up Carbon County Star Parties on there. And we can accept you. It's open and free to everybody. So we don't charge for anything. Um, everything that we have has been donated. So it's just free to everybody. Uh, we also started doing programs at our local schools. Uh, most people don't realize that, you know, with our combined community of Carbon and Emory County, we have 23 schools. And they don't have telescopes, but they start teaching astronomy in first grade. Mm -hmm. So now we started going there and helping them. And we've also started getting contact with the Boy Scouts of America so we can help the Scouts get their astronomy merit badge as well, which is one of the hardest ones for them to get. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's so difficult because nobody had telescopes. There's, in our uh, computer-guided telescopes, we have roughly 42,000 objects in the space that we can see with these telescopes. Oh, okay. uh, so there's always something to see, and the sky changes with the seasons, so there's always something different to see every time as well. Just 42,000. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's all. Uh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> we can see all that in one night. <laughs> What can people expect at a star party? Do they bring a uh, lawn church? Do they bring a, a jacket? Food? Definitely, definitely dress appropriately. Uh, even though it's summer right now, the nights can get pretty chilly. So definitely bring a jacket and wear some pants, wear shoes because we are up on top of the hill. So there's rocks and sticks and cactus around. Uh, definitely bring some chairs. Uh, the star parties themselves go from 6 in the afternoon until at least 10 o'clock at night. So it just, you know, as the longer you stay, the more you can see because it gets darker as it gets mm -hmm. later. Sure. Especially now that it's summer, it takes so long to get dark. Uh, we usually have a small campfire going or a grill. So since it's around dinner time, if they come early, um, bring some hot dogs, bring some s'mores, bring some drinks, whatever you want. And you can cook that stuff over the fire. And, you know, just relax and have a good time. Sounds like a good time. Now, you're starting in the evening. Is there an evening star? Is there something uh, at this particular time of year, Jupiter, Venus, something you look at to start out? Yeah. Uh, right now, we still are able to see Saturn as well, which is everyone's favorite because of the rings. Mm -hmm. um, it's only at a 17-degree tilt right now, so it's not a spectacular view, but you can still see the rings. And we always look at Jupiter. Um, depending on its axis, we can usually see four of its moons as well. Sometimes only three, but sometimes we can actually see five. Wow. And of course, you know, Venus is the big star in the sky right now. Everyone sees it. It's the brightest object out there. Mm -hmm. It's so. a lot of studying and we watch the computer programs. We have astronomy software that keeps an eye on all this stuff for us as well so that we know what's coming up. Okay. Anything else that we haven't touched on that you might want to mention? You um, you talked about the uh, the Facebook page. So is there a, an email address? Is that will that be found on the um, Facebook? Yeah, there's also an email address, uh, and that is Carbon County Star Parties at Yahoo dot com. Or if anybody has questions or comments or needs more information, they can call me at six five zero one seven seven zero. Okay. Eddie, thanks for coming in. Appreciate no it. Thank you for having me. Eddie Horvath, host of 2015 Carbon County Star, Solar, and Eclipse Parties on a Castle Country Radio FYI.